Damn. Yeah. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Burrow Sound, recording here live at the UUIN Collective. I am your host with the most, DJ Czar, a.k.a. Big Turk. Jeez. Today we got an incredible show in store, you know what I'm saying? The one, the only, the mother goddess in the building. Hey, what's poppin'? It's the mother goddess, be the hottest, your mama with no baby mama drama, ain't got no kids. Jeez! Yo, so I had this question, I'm gonna address it now, so let's like, what do I call you? Because I'm trying to call you DMG, because yeah. I don't know, like, goddess is like, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like a simp saying that, and then like, mother, it's like, you know, you're not my unna, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, do I call you DMG? Like, what else do people call you? Well, I don't break dance, so I don't know why you want to call me DMG so Jeez. bad. <laughs> DMG, you know, yeah. it's not like DMX almost, you know what I'm saying? Honestly, like, you could call me goddess, you could call me mama, the mother goddess, that's my artist name, right? But okay, okay. just call me goddess, it's easy. Okay, okay. Yo, goddess, just say yo, so oh, it's not goddess, a sim. Goddess. Yo, goddess. G? G? Why? For goddess. My name's not Greg. <laughs> okay, okay. We don't That's even know fair. G, like goddess. So you're know, speaking on your artistry. So, yeah. and I kind of want to bring this. I brought this up earlier when we spoke, but uh, when I heard your song "Rage," I found it interesting that the angle you took with the music you wanted to do was more of like a, almost like an alternative, yeah. like emo rap type yeah, vibe. Yeah, so, like, yeah. what was the inspiration behind that? Like, was you listening to like? A bunch of different stuff growing up, like yeah, I did. Yeah, so growing up, I actually listened to a lot of rock music. Okay, to the point where like my mom got mad, like she had to buy me a uh, Green Day um, album, mm. and she had to buy me an Avril Lavigne album, and she said, "Yo, you need to listen to different music, mm. right?" But mm. then I started listening to more music later of everything or whatever. Mm. But I do have the alternative type of shit. Like mm. I love Paramore. Okay. I think she's a sick singer. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I, and then in rock music, there's more lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they tell stories. So mm-hmm. I bring that into the thing. But the reason why I made Rage and the only music video I have out mm-hmm. is because when I made that song, I produced it myself in my kitchen. Like you I made that beat? Yeah. I record, what? I re- and I recorded it and engineered it myself. What? Yeah. So like, I, I didn't know that. I was at the beach. I used to live at Woodbine Beach, right? Yeah. So I was at the beach and I was sitting under a tree. Like I was kind of like in a bad situation. I was, okay. I was thinking about some shit. And then uh, I was listening to the beat that I had. And then I made that hook and I rushed home. I said, yo, I'm not going to remember this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So then when I did it or whatever, I'm like, this is just so different. And people are going to diss about it. Mm-hmm. I got to put it out now. So then um, I had a friend who was doing like videography. So I said, record me. And then I, I'm i the one who like edited into the graphic design on the video. Oh, So wow. I edited into the graphic design on the video. And the reason why I made Rage is because I was going through Rage because I had a court case. Jeez. And I was like, just I was just pissed. But I wouldn't have release that later because i wasn't feeling that yeah we won't yeah. talk about that you know what i'm saying we won't, yeah. you know, we won't go into detail but that's actually dope that you engineered yeah, I was it like and mad. produced it yeah so do you <laughs> still like make beats so like you can make beats i could do everything but i don't Jeez. it takes it takes too much time i want to focus on a couple of th- it's, it's hard to do everything at the same time your main thing is yeah. like you want to just kind of like record on the track like your vocals you'd rather have someone else make a beat yeah, and then, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course of course even like i could do um videography and graphic design but i can't i want someone else to just do it because i'm a perfectionist like mm-hmm. being a virgo or whatever like mm-hmm. i'm like it's never going to be done mm-hmm. so i want someone else to just to do it okay yeah and so speaking of like the things that that you do like you are you're also big on the beagle like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. So I tried Beagle once. I don't know how, but like I make beats, right? So somehow I ended up in this like group chat with a bunch of like Americans, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. like I was on their Beagle All team. American, yeah. And like, you know, I tried a one, two and like I wasn't getting no donations. And then later I found out. Donations. That it's like, yeah. I wasn't getting no like gifts. What are they called? Gifts? Yes. My it's like, it feel like donations. <laughs> You yes. know what I'm saying? Like, yes. I wasn't getting no loot is what I'm saying, yes. you know? And yes. I was making beats. But then later I found out, like, you really make money off that if you're, like, a girl who's, like, no. popping on there. Like You'll make money if they want to give you money. You don't want to be a girl. I guess There's I a lot of ugly girls up. out there. There's a lot of fucking stupid ass people. But probably people. the most successful people on Beagle are probably, like, you know, girls. No, you got to be, be like, token. You have to have 
uh, yeah, girls, it's easy. It's a template. Yeah. But the mm-hmm. real people who are shining, listen, there's there's star girls on there, but all those mans, they sneak away from them because they, they provide for them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, they yeah. sneak away and come to me. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a no man, it's this free zone. I don't care what girl you're supporting. So you know, how'd you get, yeah. how'd you get started in Bego and what was like the formula? How'd you get to be popping where like, you know how I found out about Bego? Of- how? Okay. So, um, I always wake up late. So mm. I woke up early one day. It was like fucking, well, it was not early. Like it was like 10 a.m. I went to go pee. And when I went pee, this guy was on live. His name's uh, Chance the Stallion because me and my family, we like reality television or whatever. Okay, right? I'm big on reality TV too. Yeah, so we were watching uh, A Chance at Love. Okay. Zeus Network, right? So I follow like most people on the cast. I'm mixed yeah. up, right? <laughs> I'm so. Mixed up. Then he went on live at 10 a.m., right? So I'm like, mm-hmm. what the hell? I'm watching it. And he's like, drunk as fuck. He's with the girls from Bad Girls Club. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh, he just got banned off a of beagle for sucking my finger. And he's like, oh, shut up. And then after then, she's like, he makes 5K a day on there. So I was going downstairs You're to the like, kitchen. Yo, what is beagle? <laughs> yeah, I went downstairs to the kitchen. My family's there. I said, yo, this guy said that, what or whatever. They said, what? So then me and my sister, right? Me and Clout, mm-hmm. we went on the YouTube in our in our fucking uh, living room. Mm-hmm. And we're like, what is beagle? So we're watching what is beagle while we're watching live until he got cut off. I'm downloading the app now because someone said yeah. you're making money. I download the app. We start. I said, should I start live? I look fucking ugly, right? Mm. So I started live. I made the title of my live. I'm ugly as fuck. <laughs> so she came in my live. I look fucking ugly. She she's cute to me, but Wait, she how, was kind of ugly. How many people is like a lot of people? Like how many? 150. Right away? Your yeah, first because, time on Beagle yeah, ever? Yeah, because when you go on Instagram Live, you have no one on there, right? Yeah. So I was like, what the fuck? So I said, I sit on there for like eight hours. I started sleeping the stairs and they were watching me. Like I was doing some shit. And I said, okay, I want to come back. People were trying to tell me to join their circus families and shit. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and I just kept going on there every single day. And then soon, like I gained respect on Beagle and in my household. Like even our in our last house, yeah. I got like a lot of noise complaints because I started doing Beagle parties and I got a microphone and so yo how active is the Beagle audience like are they interacting with you like they're crazy yeah they're interacting yeah and they're saying beer roses and shit yeah and they remember stuff they one guy like yo there's so much people they'll be like I like the conversation you had with your mother the other day you guys sound the same um I really like the bond I'm like what the fuck I didn't even remember that (laughs) so they remember everything and then some people are new, some people are old. Some people, I see them from day one because you Beagle's different. It, it seems like it kind of creates like <laughs> almost like a, a cult around the person. Like you almost have people worshiping you. Yeah. And I have some people want to kill me too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What so are the I, Beagle haters like? Like, do they tune in every episode type shit? They do. There's Beagle TV watchers. So what? a Beagle TV watcher is someone who like logs out of their account and then they watch anonymously because Beagle mm-hmm. is like... It's like, um, I don't know how to compare it. Like, remember there used to be like a Vibe TO or something like that? Okay. Some website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But when you go and view the person's profile, it says this person viewed you at this time. Oh, okay. You come in the room, it says boom, right? Yeah. So I could go and say, hey, why are you in a room? You never said hi or never sent a, a gift or a donation, like you would say, right? Mm-hmm. But like, you have to log out and then boom. So I have a lot of Beagle TV watchers that are like anonymous because they know that if they're in their room in their profile, I'm going to say, yo, send a gift or what are you saying? Are you good? Are you dumb? I have a question. Like, yeah. does do you, does your Beagle audience or like that fandom, does that ever like penetrate into your like regular everyday life where yeah. like it affects you on a day to day? Like, do people yes. recognize you off Beagle? Yeah, I just got in a fight. I just shit? got in a fight. I had to beat this guy up a little bit. I didn't really beat him. I just punched him. I just, these same nails, I broke them, three of them, because I went to a, a this girl, she said, oh, she knew me off of Beagle, but I actually met her at a party too or whatever. And um, she was like, yeah, like I'm a fan or whatever, but I want you to come out. So I went out or whatever. And then there was an after party. I went to the after party. Four of the men said, I know you from somewhere. I said, maybe it's IG. They said, no, Beagle. So from there, it kind of went wrong or whatever, because he kept asking me about how much money I make on there or whatever. And then I had to punch him at the end of the day. So you snuffed the dude. Yes, I did it in such a good way. How do you how did you do it? Did he like retaliate? He kept saying like, oh, like I said, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. Right. So, uh, yo, I (laughs) opened the door and I was like, I'm out of here. Right. Yes. And I closed the door like this. And then I opened it and I punched him in his face. 
And then I, I closed and I ran to my Uber. But like. That's slick. Yeah, I like that. Even when I was leaving into my Uber, there, the guy was like, ah, ha, ha. Like he wanted more, you know. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Okay. It's, it's part of my legacy now. Okay. So, yo, <laughs> so I rate that because it kind of shows that like you're comfortable fighting. So like. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what? I rate that though because I'm into am, UFC. I'm am. into UFC and shit. So like, did you were you like a fighter growing up, or is that kind of like a self defense thing, or like you were getting into fights growing up? Type I shit? watched a lot of wrestling growing up. WWE. Uh, Cloud. What's Cloud saying about that? Why? What, what was that? What was that? Well, like, sometimes I would, WWE? I would practice moves on her. You tr- practice WWE moves? Yeah, on because Cal-Girl? I used to watch it. So what what moves like wh- which superstars would you emulate? Like, uh, Rey Batista Mysterio. Ball? You do six one nine on Cow Girl. I tried different things. Not not everything. We grew out of it. <laughs> you know, so now I, I just so bring it to the it. streets. I was kind of yeah. heartbroken when I found out it was fake because it kind of like you know when Santa Claus you find out Santa Claus ain't real kind of like mm-hmm. close the whole thing like that's kind of how I felt with WWE. But I used to tune in because like I felt like it was real, yo. As Some, a youth. Yeah, it is real, but it's not at the same time. Some people die from it. No, the, I feel like the yeah. stunts are part of like the physical parts. You know parts what are kills people stories? in WWE? The cage matches. Oh, when they you know when the they top? used to do the cage? Jeff Hardy used to jump from the yeah, fucking top. That's, that man that's broke his what leg it made shit. them. It's like, okay, let's just be fucking fake now as yeah. fuck. Because mm-hmm. people are fucking dying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I love it. Whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So another thing I want to talk to you about was. So during. So I follow you on IG. And at the beginning of the pandemic, like you were actually like vocal about like kind of where you stood about it in a time where like a lot of people were kind of compliant or like going with the flow or like quiet. So like, what was that about? You told me you're a conspiracy theorist. Yes. So you mean like about the vaccination? All yeah, that I'm about? like the whole thing. Because I'm also conspiracy theorist yeah. too. And like I'm like unashamedly, yeah. I'll talk about it. I'm a big, well, what I thought about it was that it's fake and mm. that, that they're putting shit in people's bodies. I don't know what if it's to track them or to make them die younger or whatever. Yeah. Because you've know, so, seen all the, like, the effects of it. Like, you know, like they release documents about yeah, like the side effects. Yeah, i seen effect. it all or whatever. And then at a certain point, it was October, the end of October, I really wanted to make moves. I wanted Mm -hmm. more than what I was doing. So I went and I actually got my first vax. And then in November, I got my second. You didn't feel nothing? like. Yeah, my arm. Yeah, I felt it. Yeah, it was sore each time. But I never felt nothing or whatever, right? Hmm. And then from there, I would never take a motherfucking third, fourth. They're playing people. You You might have to get them for the rest of your life. You know what pissed me off? I got vax, right? So... I got vax and then I went to a fucking restaurant. My friend's like, let's go do happy hour at a fucking like Moxie's or something or okay. whatever. So mm-hmm. we go there. She had a fake one, right? Mm-hmm. I'm there with my real shit. I just got it. The bitch, yo, she put up a thing. She looked at my ID and she's like, you need to wait um, four more days because actually you can't come into my establishment. I said, what the fuck? I got to wait to fucking come in here. Like, it's so big. I was like, I'm, I got played. I got fucking played. Like, that really pissed me off. Man, all of this yeah. truly, it disgusts me because, like, at the end of the day, anyone can get it. And it's not I'm too bad for the majority. Now, yeah. And it's just, like, these rules are going to lead to other things. And I think it's all part of a bigger plan to kind of, like, eventually, like, I feel like they want, like, more control. And they're going to eventually pay us just to live. But they're going to take away more of our freedoms. They were you know? kind of paying people to live still. You're right. Mm. Yeah, like eventually, yeah, Serb, Serb was like essentially universal basic income. And that's kind of like the socialist communist dream where it's like, yo, we pay people so they don't have to work yeah. that hard so we can enjoy our mental mm-hmm. health, whatever, whatever. But in return, you're sacrificing the ability to maybe get rich or maybe yeah. get a Lambo or you know what I'm saying? But it's true. it comes with a cost because it's like maybe if we don't own anything. Mm-hmm. we'll be happier because it's like you won't have an attachment to like material things but at the same time it's like your freedom to want to have that you should have that right you know what i'm saying like the yeah. government should be able to take that away it's true it's mm-hmm. true i feel you on that what other conspiracy theories are you into because like i'm into the like, the heavy ones like clones and shit like. yeah and like um uh sandy hook shit like that What's the Sandy? I don't know about the Sandy Hook. I think it's called Sandy Hook. It's like, you know, there was a school shooting one time and it was all up on the news and they're like, oh, there's helicopters. This is this. Someone shot up the school. It was in America. And I remember too, my mom even linked me and she was like, oh, look what's going on. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, when you look on the blogs and shit, 
some people who live in that small town, mm-hmm. they said that I don't know who that person on the news is or whatever. So that got me into crisis actors. Yeah, because yo, there's, the there's same, so many of those. The same oh people God. are in the same things. And then yeah. the same like women and stuff that are in different trials or whatever, they're saying, oh, I had a kid here. But people are like, yo, um, my kid goes to that school and like no one died. Yeah, so that's so interesting. That was the first one where I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to expose them one day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah. That's the way I can remember. So yeah, I want to get into more of your journey. I, I know you're an entrepreneur. You, you registered your business, Righteously Ratchet. You know what I'm saying? You, got, you guys should check that out. Righteously Ratchet. And so you were born in T-Dot. They only blessed you when you sneeze, low in degrees. So they stay pressing you for one just to get a cut of the cheese. What do you think that means? I feel like it means what it means. You know what I'm saying? No, I tell me like what you think that means. They, you know, people aren't really going to like support you or look for you, but they're still trying to like leech off you and like make money off you but on some finesse shit like they won't truly support you type shit okay so Did basically right? yeah 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 so basically i'm like born in t dot they only bless you when you sneeze, sneeze right yeah. low in degrees because we have winters and shit yeah yeah it's cold right? it's cold so they keep pressing you once to get a cut of the cheese so yeah. in canada you got to get a degree you got to go to university to get a good job to get a good right. salary so that's what i meant like it's um I will tell you Thank right you. now, bro, I went, I got a degree, Thank you, did not get a crazy salary, bro. You right. So saying? that's what I said. It's like, that's too, what bro. I meant from there. So even in my music video, you see it like I'm wearing a black, I'm wearing a black blazer, which is a bra and like a top and yeah. I'm wearing dress pants. Yeah, I wore yeah. that at, at like a workplace I had and I have a do-rag on top of my head. It's kind of mm. just, and I'm talking about what I'm talking Jeez, about. Jeez, you know, we got yes, that girl sound treatment. Cheers, you know, cheers, you. cheers, cheers. You know, no, saying, come, cheers. come, come, we got to touch the. Yeah. All right, cheers. cheers. Thank you. Mm. I do find that, like, out of all cities, like Toronto, mm. it, they don't, it's harder to support Cloudy. local, you know? Cloud. Oh, I'll just leave it here. Like, I feel like the local scene doesn't support you until, like, you're up and, like, they can find a way to, like, get clout off you or yes. get money off you. You know Yo, what I'm saying? You know what? I want to respect you because you did, like, you you found out about me, right? But no yeah. one knows nothing about me. Mm-hmm. And they just see my image. And uh, they make all these assumptions. You know what I mean? They're yeah. already trying to tear me down for my image. Yeah. I'm not like these other bitches who got BBLs and got veneers and whatever. God <laughs> made me like this. So if you're mad... Bring it up with fucking God. Like, I don't get that, too. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, but I'm a lyricist. I make music. I've been, I know how to play the fucking saxophone. Like, don't fucking play with me. Like, mm-hmm. Toronto's kind of nasty sometimes, all the time. But mm-hmm. it's fun, I guess. Mm-hmm. It made, I made fun of it. Yo, yeah. I just want to say I support natural, but I also support, you know, if BB. you want to save up your BB, you know what I'm saying? Yes. You have the right to do that, yes. but I know what you mean. If you like, need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like if you want it, like, you shouldn't feel like you need it. Like, if you yes. truly want it, I feel like, you know, because mm-hmm. sometimes I'd be like, yo, man, it would be sick to have fucking perfect teeth. You know what I'm saying? Yes. If I had that money, if yeah. I was, like, a millionaire, fuck yeah, yeah I would pay, like, If I had something wrong that. with me, I would fix it, like, an extra, <laughs> like, an extra head, <laughs> an extra head or an extra pinky or something. Yeah, I will take yeah, that yeah. off or whatever. But what I want to say is if you're going to get a BBL, make sure you lose some weight first because you, don't make your fucking cheeks fat. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's a there's a technique there's you gotta yeah you gotta a, lose weight like do you even know lose up? weight first I you, thought you have to gain weight first so you can like get some that people fat are fat on your ass. some people are just fat right so you ever watch my five hundred <laughs> pound life fat. you ever watch my five hundred pound life they say you're not working hard enough to get <laughs> to get the surgery you need to lose some weight before we make you healthy. Yo, she's like some people are just fat. And <laughs> now you took off the glasses. Yo, to... <laughs> yeah, that fam. was funny as hell. <laughs> Man turned red. Okay. That was funny as hell. Big up yourself. So. Nah, that was funny. <laughs> uh, so, yo, okay, wait. So, what part of the city are you like from? Like, I was born in the east side. East okay. side Scarborough all day. Jeez, Scarborough, 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 Scarbor
I would say the East is like 51% Filipino, low key. Like, yeah, going against, but you especially know even what? Catholic district school. Nah, board? nah, nah, nah. Through some PTSD, you have to watch out for Filipinos because. Oh, you got some experience with Filipinos. Yes, they okay. think they're black and then they take it too far. <laughs> One Filipino person said, Oh, this person's my cousin. I believe them. A yeah. black person. And then I'm like, That's not your cousin. And they kept saying, Nigga, nigga, nigga. Like, bitch, I will beat you up now. That's have what you the ever po- had to beat someone up for saying the N-word? No, I don't care. Oh, okay. You yeah, yeah. One time I had to defend my aunt who's white and she said the N-word and I was like, oh, yo, that's my aunt. Like, I'm, I should beat both of you up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're too lit. <laughs> Wait, the so fuck? you're mixed? Like, you're like, I'm what's, the, what's the white side? What's the black side? Like, what? My mom is British Spanish. My dad is Grenadian. Okay. Spanish from Spain. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you speak Spanish? No, but I'm, I'm linguistic. What do you mean? Like, like you speak languages? If someone's going to talk to me, <laughs> put some hands up, I'm going to know what they're saying. Okay. You also did say you were psychic. I kind of want to get into yeah, that. Yeah, I was psychic. When yeah. did you realize <laughs> you were a fucking Raven from Not So Raven? Raven Baxter. From forever. My whole family kind of is, except for my younger sisters. So Not wait, yet. How, okay. So was there like a moment when you were you and you just saw into the no, future? No, I think the happened? only people who are psychic in my family is me and Clout. Me and Clout girl are psychic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't even know she was going to pull up. I was going to ask you about it. You know, I didn't even find out that's like you every, guys were sisters. That's what every guy says. <laughs> no, like, I didn't even know you guys were sisters when, like, I first met you. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I kind of relatively seen her on IG. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, being around that, like, how, like, what lessons you learn from being around that kind of, like, fame notoriety? You know what I'm saying? Because you kind of see. From my sister? Yeah. Like, you know, you're part of it. She in that taught sense. me to um, not pay attention to negativity, but you have mm. to, like, um, experience it yourself to, to know yeah. that. Mm. But she kept saying to me, because I used to protect her a lot. People used yeah. to say, I never was, was high key, right? Mm. And she would push it out. And then I'm like, oh, I like this. And then people say shit and I say, yo, bro, like, yo, how is this person saying this? I'll go, I used to go hard in the comments for mm-hmm, her. Mm-hmm. And she said, yo, do not. The more high you get, there's going to be hate. You know what I mean? So now that I have my own shit or whatever, I'm just like, I get what she was saying. That's what mm-hmm. I learned from her. Yeah. But otherwise, we, we're the same person. When you- people don't know about Cloud Girl, but Cloud Girl mm-hmm. is the same as me. Like, they, you need to earn that fucking respect. To be, uh, you need to Libra earn that gang, respect. Yeah. Gang. No, you need to learn that respect or earn that respect to to get that out of her. She's yeah. the same as me. But yeah. if you're talking to a thousand people or five hundred people, you're gonna be gutter mm-hmm. and you're gonna entertain. Mm-hmm. So has anyone had a one on one conversation with a girl in a mm-hmm. good? No, so mm-hmm. they don't know nothing. Mm-hmm. We're the same. Yeah. Was there a point when you were receiving negative comments where it's like initially you take it personally? Like yeah. it's kind of hard to kind of detach, right? Because I'm imagining well, like yeah, if I'm getting bit. that much negativity, it's like yes, you probably like, fuck is what they're saying true? Like why did this? And they kind of have to like detach from it, right? Yes. Yeah, so I'm a I'm a really transparent person. So the only time someone could get me is if they have breaking news, but I don't have a lot of breaking news. But um, I would say when they like I don't know I'm not gonna say it, but some things they say dumb. They yeah. only know a couple things about me. You know what I mean? There's like assumptions yeah. about you. Like they assume you oh, are this like the, character. The main thing is this. On Beagle, sometimes they'll say, "You're, uh, are you a tranny? You know? You get that? Um, a couple times, because it's trolls, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on that platform, there's a lot of trannies. It's American people. It's a lot yeah, of gay yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gay people run the app on Beagle. But um, they'll say that about me. But they're they're testing, because they know that I'm a, I'm a real woman. You know what I mean? The mother goddess. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, they know. So that, one time that upset me, but then I kept getting it and then didn't. So it's just like breaking the ice about it. Mm. And then other than that, then um, the other thing that upset me, um, nothing really, because they don't know the facts. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't care. Mm-hmm. It shows that they're like watching me. Yeah, yeah. Can we get in a shot in here? Yo, what, what, what I'm going to do is like, yo, we're going to take you, a baby. quick break. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be right back after word from our sponsors. You know what I'm saying? We'll take a quick shot. Back with the mother goddess, Burl yes, Sound TV, DJ Zara. Can I hear you know some saying? music? P- play uh, P Power. Yo, we got Wass on the DJ right now. You know what I'm saying? Big out, cl- big she up clout. You know what I'm saying? Ah, 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 ah. That pussy got powers. This episode of the Burl Sound is brought to you by our friends over at Hello Piffy. 
They are a cannabis delivery service based in the GTA. You can find them on Leafly, 7 Days a Weed, Instagram at Hello Piffy, and on their website at HelloPiffy.ca. If you tell them that the Burrow Sound sent you, you will save 30% off your order. Enjoy the rest of the show. Girl, you got to right. turn it down. All right, we it's back. We back on the Burrow Sound. You know what I'm saying? The mother goddess in the building. You know what I'm saying? UUN. Big up, watch the sauce. Clouds are on the building, <laughs> too. You know, somewhere there. Yeah, and, uh, the mother goddess has an AirPod playing yeah. right yes. now in her right ear. Yeah. What's playing right now? What song is this quote? The baby. The baby. And what, Danny Lee? Hi, yeah. And who? Danny Lee. Oh, yeah. I know my music. The baby, Danny Lee. She's like, you know my jeans are sitting right. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You know, gonna come back. Add the song in. It's the future. When you edit it. It's the future. Okay. Like that, if you have We're finna do it. Yo, yo, get on the mic. Get on the mic one time. I don't know if I can hear you. You know what I'm saying? Clock girl, no. girl telling us to do an AirPod party behind the scenes. No face, no case. Yo, there's one thing I need to talk Train about. Turn it down a bit. <laughs> there's one thing I need to talk to you Hold about. Hold on a second. All right, I'm gonna wait. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you put some cranium on? Cranium. Yeah, cranium. What's up? Yo. The Will Smith, Chris Rock, slap. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about so, it? Yo, yo, okay. The, I've spoken to a lot of females about it, and most of them agree that it was an attractive quality that Will Smith displayed yeah, by doing that. that. Yeah, would you Would you agree with that? Like, if you were in a similar situation, a man's roasting you, would you want your man to kind of slap the guy or snuff him? I would, but why does he have to walk on stage? That's too much time. But at the end of the day... <laughs> Wait, you think you should have done behind the scenes type thing? Like, if, if you guys are face to face, it makes sense, but... To go out of your way, cause a scene type footsteps, stomps, and then the slap. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, but I think it's a conspiracy too. They're both trained actors and they, they've they been in many different things together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I've seen like a close-up of like Chris Rock's He's face. like this... I- wow it sounds like me yo i don't know especially as black people like i'm sorry i'm telling you but literally it's just like what the fuck you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. like that was fucking planned thanks for the song and like what the hell <laughs> what is cloud girl playing for you right now it's cranium it's yourself you know, I got a fat like right here. Ah! Would you ever? Would you ever make that type I of music? Would you ever make like dance? Yes, yes, of- yes, yes, yes. I made a, a Caribbean song for myself. Mm. It's called oh, Kajana. Yeah, it's called Kajana. Yeah, so like when mm. they edit this shit, it's gonna be like tell them. It goes kick kick Kajana. No, kick kick Kajana. Like, oh, we have our songs together. But there's another one. Which one? Which one? Like mango, rose, like all of them. Like, yes, but you guys have bare dancehall tracks the, the, in the, the vault. Dancehall Caribbean saying. ones, all the ones we made in Desi's studio. Oh, we have a song that goes, uh, "Niggas can't swim, so yeah. I put him in the water." Yeah. Call it Grand Slaughter. Yeah, we'll send you everything. Oh, do you want to hear it? Can we bump it? Yeah, bump bump it on the mic. Bump it on the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, send it. Send it. You have water. We'll add this in post. We'll add this in post. Okay, I'm gonna send it. No, let's listen to it. What's the song called? It's called Water. Water. Yeah, niggas can't swim. So I threw them in the water. Call it Grand Slatter. So you break down the lyrics for me. Is water like a symbol for like wet water pussy? Water is water. No, it could be. You oh, okay. No, so but water, real water. No, real water. So you're trying to drown men. Yes. Like you're trying to murder people yeah. by drowning them in water. You know what? I really like horror movies. I'm a horror thriller fanatic. I've been waiting. When Corona happened, I'm like, is zombies gonna come? Mm. I want zombies to come because then I don't have to work. I don't have to do shit, and I could start a cult or something. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I will be your queen, but it didn't happen still. But yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Just what like- is it? What is it about like scary movies that? Because like I always find it like crazy that people like <laughs> enjoy getting scared, enjoy like being frightened. Like what is no, it about that? I don't enjoy getting scared. I'm I'm immune to it at this point. But so you don't get I, scared when you watch scary movies. When I watch scary movies. I learn things. So, like, one movie I watched is, like, Train to Busan or something. And it was, like, a... I don't know. I think it's Korean or something. And it's zombies. And they are stuck on a train. Let me tell you something. The man, he ran from one train car to the next. And he figured out that the zombies that they could only see. 
Yeah. They they can't hear or whatever. They can see. So you're giving like survival, like apocalyptic survival Listen, so survival the man tips. went to the next car. Yeah. And then he's like, what am I going to do? He took a water bottle he found. He sprayed it on the fucking window. And then he found like a newspaper. He went, blah, 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 paper machete. I said, that's a good tactic. You could just put some water and some paper and then you block out the view. So do you feel like prepared for like, you sound like very prepared for like the zombie apocalypse. Do you believe it's going to happen? Maybe in our lifetime or no? I think maybe. Like maybe like my lifetime or someone else's. Mm -hmm. Play it out loud though. Where do you stand on aliens? Aliens, I think they're real because I actually had an alien experience before. You have to talk about that. So the alien experience I experienced before is with a... Someone I this okay, is the well, water run the song. Track, then we'll talk about the alien experience. Yeah, let's run this. This is the water song we're talking about, okay. right? Put him in the water. Put him in the water. Hey. Put him in the water. Jeez. You guys? Yeah, us together. Put him in the water. Niggas can't swim, so I put him in the water. Record this banger. We freestyled the whole song. Yeah, yeah, we freestyled the whole song. So it sounds like a freestyle, but it it has a message. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, the doll one's sick. She says, "Um, I gotta get this. Oh, I gotta get this doll. You could call me Homer and no." Dope. <laughs> yeah, dope, 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 dope. I gotta get this dope. Off, you could call screen, me Homer and dope. Off screen, you was telling me how you guys now make music for fun. So, like, yes. when did that transition happen? At one point, did it feel like you was just trying to make music for like? No, we always or? we always made music for fun. Yeah. Like at a certain point too. Like I won't go so deep, but I try to make my sister make music and shit. Mm. Oh, sorry. I try yeah. to make my sister make music and shit as a hobby. Like, mm. we're fucking bored. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I started recording her on my phone. I started making, editing music videos for her and stuff. You know what I mean? So that, yo, like, it's sick. And then she used to, um, even before we ever put music out, she would write her music out on, like, a fucking piece of paper. Mm. And then she would come in and, like, perform it for us, me and my mom. 
But you were kind of like pushing her to like go take it seriously type thing, like or what was like you were supportive of, of her at the beginning. She's yeah. she's special. She's special, right? Mm. But even before that, we did some stupid shit. Like I remember I had an iPod that recorded. You remember those iPods that record? Okay. It's like a shuffle. It's so fucking small, but you can record a video. See, word. I don't yeah. Remember those. So one time I, I found a poem and I said, yo, 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 what? Like, what? My sister, she actually knows how to beatbox. Well, I don't know if she knows how to know more. <laughs> yeah. So I said, yo, I'm, yo. I, so I told my mom, I said, yo, let's, can you record us? We went into the hallway of an apartment. Yeah. And then fucking, she's recording us or whatever. And I was like saying this poem and my sister was beatboxing in the back. Yee. Like, we were always. Doing creative shit, you know what I mean? But then the the thing is, the thing is that it's the Toronto scene. They make everything so bad. Mm. We've been doing this shit from forever. We used to do MTV Crib Homes, yes. everything. So you guys had like a pure thing, but then we when you had to, you had to like, when you see yeah. the Toronto market, it kind of like perverts Once we it. release it, people are like, what the fuck are you doing? And it's so rude. It's mm. so fucking rude, right? Yeah, right? Mm. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. But then but but then um when fucking um we started getting popular or whatever, mm-hmm. it got chaotic or whatever. So that's when I started managing her and I said, yeah. Okay, like I learned from some other people. I've been behind the scenes with other managers of people who manage people. Mm-hmm. And I said, Okay, girl, I learned a lot of shit. Like, mm-hmm. let me manage you. Mm-hmm. So that's when she she dropped Clutterama or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So I knew some shit, whatever, but it's so hard to network in the city. I want to bring her somewhere else. So we're, we're going to go to L.A. soon. Mm. Yeah. What's it like navigating, like managing a female artist in Toronto? Is it like different because she's a female? Like it's like it, when you're yeah. trying to get features or gigs and stuff, yeah. like is there like a stigma or something? Bro, like, like yo, listen, if I get up and do this, jeez, you're on, you're on Fenty. Mm. <laughs> you're on fentanyl. Okay. It's hard. Yeah. 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 When did you discover that doing that was like a drug to men? I am a drug, but what did you, what did you say? Like, what point did you realize that, like, if you're to do that, say, in, like, a room, like, the average dude is going to be, like, essentially on a drug, on a high? Mm-hmm. Like, when did you when realize, did I realize that? When I realized that? Yeah, because, like, when did you, because you're kind of, like, very, like, free with, like, your movement Boy, and your body and stuff, you know what I'm Boy, saying? Yeah. I'm Mr. Clean uh, as that clown girl. <laughs> Listen. Barat. <laughs> Very nice. Barat, yes. Oh, you shake your ass. Uh, Mr. Clean. No, but like, uh, when did you realize that? When did you adopt that into your thing? Like, when did you start? Because you, you kind of freely uh, dance and stuff. Like, I would say um, when I was in high school, mm-hmm. I used to fucking hide my bum. I used to get my, you know Why? how, you know how on your backpack, how you can level it and make it lower. lower I used to lower it and it used to, it used to hit on my bum. <laughs> Cause it was so low. Yeah. It was so low because like, I was like, I had to hide my fucking bum and stuff. Cause people liked it so much. And then in mm. them culture too, like people like skinny people, mm. I didn't care, but I just didn't like all the attention. Cause yeah. I was a virgin for a long time. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what the fuck? But now I say I would own up to it since I don't know, fucking 2014, mm-hmm. 2015. Yeah. When I got out of the hood. Cause when you're in the hood, they say, what the fuck? Why are you wearing platform heels? Why are you mm-hmm. fucking wearing a skirt in the winter time? So when I got out of there, I started to be the best person I could be. And especially when I traveled to like somewhere else and then I presented myself how I wanted to. And they said, yo, yeah. you're fucking up. I like your outfit. I like yeah. this, this, this. And then other girls are like, I one day want to do that. Mm-hmm. So that's when I was like, I found my happiness that time. Because when you're in the hood, you don't have happiness. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. I found my happiness when I just like got outside of the hood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. do you find that like when you're able to do that, do you feel like it kind of like in your personal life, does it make it harder? Say like you want to settle down with a dude. Event. I'm not saying you do. Maybe you don't. You know what I'm saying? But like, do you talk, feel talk, like, talk. What you say? like when say like that, like that lifestyle, right? Cause yeah. it's like an open, like free, like yeah. you're free. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, does that bother say like romantic interest yeah, where it's it like, they try to be like, yo, I don't want you doing that. But you're like, yo, this is like my yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How do you navigate that? I haven't had a relationship since I 2014. Does it make it harder kind of having like a little bit of clout and like the lifestyle? Does it make it harder to find that? 
Yeah, it makes it really hard. How it makes you, it really hard. Mm-hmm. Why? Is it just like the, t- what I would the type say, of dudes coming at you? What or? I would say, it makes it easier to be lucrative. Like, people mm. know that, oh, you're this person, you're this, is this. I will do this to you to respect you. But I feel like I'm a I'm the type of girl, like, people be like, oh, I just won a Grammy. Can you come to the fucking red carpet with me? Boom, boom, boom. Mm. But it's never like... Can we go to brunch? Yeah, you're more like you're like seeking genuine like. It's like make a wish, like oh, I'm about to die. Can you come? Yeah, I'm people's dream girl, so it's like I never get to really. I make my own life experiences, but I never share that with people because they want to fix up mm-hmm. until they could chill with me. Mm-hmm. But I wish I could just chill with people. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, I like I like the good experiences, but I wish it was constant. You know what I mean? So like, what is it that you look for when you're like? I'm not saying like a type, but like. If you're trying to find someone to settle down with, like, what are traits? What can your, you know, the man's trying to slide into your DMs. You get bare DMs. What can they be doing? What are the traits that, like, you kind of look for? Or you're attracted I to? I like a, a gentle savage. So I'll okay. check you out. I'll say, you, okay, you're kind of like a savage or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And then, but you're being nice to me. Mm-hmm. And you'll fend for me. And you'll be rude to the whole world. But you'll be nice to me. So you pretty much have to be a gangster is what you're saying, but like a nice um, gangster. No, I like people who are like, yeah, you have to have that in you. Like you could mm-hmm. be a car salesman mm-hmm. and you sell fucking cars, but then you're like, you're my favorite rapper. You got that thug in you. They're, they're like, you're my favorite rapper. Like yeah. I've, I've had somebody and they're like, they're a fucking car salesman. We're in a car. They start playing instrumentals and they start freestyling for me. Mm-hmm. I really like that because that means like they appreciate me and I like art. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But they, they didn't freestyle good. Mm-hmm. And um, I never said I wanted to play my songs or freestyles. So mm-hmm. I like that type of shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. physically, is there, like, a type that you find yourself yeah, I like, typically Yeah, I like gravitate? someone who's taller than me. You're, like, 5'3", five, 5'4", five, uh, uh, maybe? 5'2". Five 5'2", two. Five two, so a lot. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, opportunity yeah. there. I like someone that's taller than me. I've never dated, like, a fucking light skin. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's my brother or not. And also, too... <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. And definitely not. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean, definitely not? You don't know. Okay, fine. I'll ask I'll you next question. Uh, next time I fuck a nigga, I'll say, Is he my brother? Like, what do you mean, definitely not? We don't know. The fuck? We don't know. Okay, so you don't go for light skinned dudes. You typically go for. I what? don't. And I don't so really. So, what's a typical I like, prototype? I like, like Taller me- than you. Like Meek Mill. Okay, it's so like a dark skinned dude, tall, like like ugly but but attractive. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you always find yourself gravitating towards that. And if you're really that. fucking attractive, you have to be really humble and you worship me because people worship you. Mm-hmm. So if you worship me, whatever, no problem. But you, know, I've always wondered this, like. Isn't that like a turnoff for girls? Like, don't girls want to be in like a submissive state? Like, you don't want a dude submitting to you, yeah. worshiping your feet. You kind of, you know, that's that's the hard part for me because um, the way my attitude is, like, people submit to me. Yeah, you know what I mean. I want a guy to submit. Like, I will submit to him in the bedroom. Yeah. But then when we're on road and say I have my own concert or whatever, mm-hmm. and everyone's like, oh, you're so sick. Even if I did the dumbest shit, yeah. you have to shut the fuck up and wait till I get home to be like, why did you do that or whatever, whatever. You like know, ride kind of you know like, what I mean? yeah, like, yeah, loyal. This is my reality. You know what I mean? Don't ever be like, oh, this is about her. Mm-hmm. No, you have to bring that later. Like I'll submit in the bedroom, but I'm a boss in my own reality. I created my own world. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm looking for, but I, I haven't found it. Yeah. It's interesting because it's like you kind of want both. You want a dude that's like masculine and dominant, but at the same time able to not be dominant yeah. because you yourself are a dominant it's personality. It's yeah. very toxic. Mm-hmm. But it, it could be really good. I feel like there's only like a few like it, that's like a hard that's like a very modern thing because like you want the tradition yeah. and the old schoolness, but you yeah. also want that open mindedness to like mm-hmm. allow you. You know what I'm saying? You know what happens with me? People come to me and they're like, oh, I like what you do. This is this. And then they like it. But then they start to regulate me on what I what they liked. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So then I have to cut them off. So. It's natural because I feel yeah. like dudes, like, once we, you know, the more you fall in love and stuff, mm-hmm. like, you feel more territorial over your girl. So, mm-hmm. it's like, maybe he's like, yo, I don't want mans looking at my girl like this, you know, like, don't post this or that, whatever. But, but, like, you knew what she was getting into kind of thing, Yeah, you know? but also, too, I don't do a lot. 
Mm. Like the way my body shaped and stuff, I really don't do it a lot. I'm just walking, I'm moving, I'm Caribbean, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for other people to say this, this, this about me, whatever, I've never starfished on camera. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I've never like, this is this. Most is my boobs and my ass So yeah. with panties on. So I mean, like, what are you getting mad about? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm con going to continue doing that because mm -hmm. I want to like... um. I'm doing it for the culture. I'm doing it for all women. Yeah. And it's natural. Do you see Britney Spears? Bitch, everyone wants to do that shit. That's literally like the formula. Everyone. Yeah. Fucking random Asian bitches are going fucking viral for being a woman and mm. to Caribbean music or something. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. every person wants to dance. If you dance and you're mad, you're a psychopath. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, that's the only time I could have fun. What I think it, it, it's doing, it's you're really capitalizing on like a very primal instinct mm -hmm. for men, you know? And like, I feel like it's not even... It's uh, a tease, but it is. It, it, it is a treat. Yeah. It's a treat. You it know is. what I mean? It's to, the, to like the, our animal brain, mm -hmm. you do get that rush, even if it's, you know, like natural, unnatural, whatever. Like, you know, like I feel like... And plus, we're also bombarded. We're like in a very sexualized yeah. era, you know. Like porn is the pretty much normal. The internet is the future. Yeah, facts, facts. Yeah, it's and the, I'm yeah. I'm an internet queen. Mm -hmm. Are you on the NFTs? No, I'm not. But I want to. I want to make like I was thinking like I want to make an NFT of my bum, but my bum will be like it will be my bum shape, but it could be like the desert, the sand. And okay, it's like, that's that's like the fucking island, and there's stars up there and shit. So your ass kind of like a Dubai island. It's like, yeah, it's sand, but then there's a crease in it, but it's the shape of my actual bum. And then you could buy different types of it. I don't know. I'm thinking about it, but I'm, I need people to help me. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I want, Yo, we my, definitely I have want people, all my NFTs to be in my body. We definitely have people here at UUIN that are with the NFTs, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, Yo, yeah. before we wrap up, I want to talk about Righteously Ratchet yeah. because you're essentially an entrepreneur. I yeah. clicked the link, you know what I'm saying? I see you have clothing. Yeah. How did that? First of all, I like the name, you know what I'm saying? Because it kind of represents that balance, you it's know what I'm saying? Style, yeah, because yeah. it's like you're kind of aware of both sides, you know what I'm yes. saying? I think that's what we need. So, how I did that you? come about? Okay, so I used to do poetry, right? Yeah. I used to be a spoken word poet. I actually got like fucking casted for gigs in cafes and shit. Mm -hmm. I'd be in cafes doing my poetry and white niggas with long hair are sketching me and saying, this is what I came up with your poetry. But then I started doing like music after because I started mm. liking instrumentals and how I sounded on in instrumentals or whatever, mm. right? So boom, righteously ratchet. I did it because it just came naturally. I'm like, I'm a hook master and mm. I'm a catchphrase master. Mm -hmm. Shit I say goes viral or whatever, mm. right? Jeez, DMG. Yeah, Sorry. DMG. Big up DMG. That's right? a new wave. Yeah. Respect Wasp with the sauce. You know what I'm saying? Hand him as a slip. Exactly. So, honestly, Righteously Ratchet, it was so natural. And the reason why I copyrighted it is because I remember, like, from years ago, let's say it goes back to 2014. Some guy, some guy was like to me, he said, we're, in, we're having a, a car hot box. After yeah. I used to host these. Every Sunday, I used to host a meeting called Superhuman Meetings. On um, Bego or? No, or in, in person. Life? Okay. I used to be on Instagram and I used to throw events. Yeah. I used to throw multiple events. Jeez. People who just got signed were in my shit. Mm. So, um, what's his name? Um, fucking, um, I'm, okay, Sudani. Mm. And then also to Just John. Oh, just John. Yeah, shout out just they John. They were in my events. They got signed after. I'm not saying I'm, I made them. The Jeez, signed. yeah, you are. Not joking. That's gonna be the title. Like the mother goddess claims to be responsible for just John's success. Do it then. But the thing is, too, <laughs> <laughs> I'm underground as fuck. You know what I uh, mean? So like, whatever. So I'm righteously ratchet. I was uplifting people, whatever. But I'm ratchet. Like I used to host my meetings and then one time I hosted my meeting I had my dodge out forms or whatever mm -hmm. I said to the people do your thing it doesn't matter whatever I had a coffee mug I said if you're gonna drink wine in the morning it doesn't matter whatever whatever I have wine stains on my boots and points they're like ah, oh. but I actually was drinking wine like you know what I mean it's, it's righteously ratchet red or white wine Red. Jeez, you're red wine like Jesus, you know what I'm saying? 
But yo, people, y'all should definitely check that out. That's on your IG bio, right? Like they can find the Reg- Registry Ratchet. Yeah, that's the only thing in my bio right now. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna put more shit in there, whatever. So I I started the business last year, and then now I have like a hundred thousand plus on Beagle or whatever. Jeez. So then I started a website. Okay. Yeah. So I started the website through drop shipping mm. so that they could handle the shit or whatever. But um, so far, I have 12 people have posters of me in my photo shoot. Is that the poster that, like, is in your room that, like, in you always show on your... Okay, okay. In my yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. 12 people have it. Yeah. This one girl, she pissed me off because she's like, oh, I have the poster. You sent it to me. But my kid, I don't know. I said, bitch, why are you wearing the fucking poster then? She said, my mom at the bottom. I said, okay, so put up the poster then. It's female empowerment. She said, you don't know my kid. She's going to uh, put her panties into a thong. I said, that gives me mean girl vibes. That's not your <laughs> he, responsibility. You know you know when the kid's like in front of the TV yeah, 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 in the yeah. mean girls? Mm-hmm. Whatever. It's a reference. But I'm like, girl, <laughs> like I'm so mad I sent her the fucking poster. Mm. But please, um, actually edit that out because um, I like I like her support. Okay, I'll remove that part <laughs> where you talk about. Uh, yeah, okay. Chana. Yeah, I like Big her support. Chana. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or you can leave it. She'll like it. Okay, but at the end of the day. Yeah, that's righteously ratchet. It's a lifestyle. Like I always said that I'm I'm really righteous. I'm ratchet. It's part of my culture. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I'm never gonna deny it. I like my roots speak heavy to me. It, it's God's plan because mm. I I don't pretend it. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like the fact that I actually want to dance, the fact that I actually want to drink rum and mm. fucking Hennessy. Do you ever hear Caribbean music? Rum in my veins, mm-hmm. rum in my soul. Mm-hmm. It's me. Like, that is what it is. Now, when I see you, you strike me as someone who's really, like, open to the universe's will for them. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you go with the flow and, like, you're aware and, like, spiritually uh, aware. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I you're see right. You, you know you're saying? such a nice person. I you know, it's true. Like, I am open to the universe, but I'm really secretive. Hmm. Like, being from the hood or whatever, I don't like to disclose information. Even sometimes when I apply for jobs mm-hmm. and I go for the interview, mm-hmm. I'm like, why are you asking me so much fucking questions? Mm-hmm. But then I remember, oh, I want to work here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't want to answer these questions. You know what I mean? You but think like naturally, like you'll always have your guard up because I of do. that foundation. I always have my fucking guard up. Oh, what's my name? What's my age? Where am I from? I do think it's better to have your guard up than to be naive and have yeah. your guard down, you know, because it's like it's naive true. to assume that everyone is nice. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's almost like you do have to expect, like hope for the best, expect the worst type yeah, shit. You you're know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, that's what I like about me. But other people say, oh, she's fucking annoying. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I always have my guard up. This is that. But I'm open at the same time. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so if someone says something to me and said, oh, I heard that. I will fend for that and I'll expose everything about it mm-hmm. because you obviously know something about me. Yeah. So I'm an open book that way. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, I'm low key. You mm-hmm. would have to bring it to me. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to say, hey, guys, this is the fucking mix up today. Mm-hmm. And it, it, even yeah. through the music, like I, I can tell like you're not trying to like spew some like poly shit. Like you're making music that's like kind of away from that more on like the nice vibes, like party, like poetic kind of vibes you're not trying to promote that like street shit necessarily yeah my music has a like when i make music it's kind of like a undertone of you went through something Mm -hmm. but you always like overcame it yeah so it's negative but you overcame it you know what i mean type of shit i have songs we could play it later or whenever right Mm -hmm. but it's like it's literally like that you overcame something that happened Mm -hmm. or it's like i'm seducing you Mm -hmm. that's what i'm here for god told me i'm here too fair yeah but yo when you listen to like music from like literally any culture it's all love songs it's all pretty much seduction songs you listen to like turkish music arabic music like music in other languages it's almost all like you Mm -hmm. know it's only like english music and like rap that kind of talks about other stuff but every all music in history it seems like mostly love songs i was in the car today i was playing so i tried to dj for somebody else right Mm -hmm. i know they only like hip-hop but i was playing my own caribbean tunes or whatever Mm -hmm. love 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 big up the pussy boom 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 and what i want to do to make you feel awesome then i put on hip-hop and it was like oh you broke my heart but oh i now like this type of bitch and i was like in my head i didn't say it out loud because that's whack Mm -hmm. to the person Mm -hmm. i was like yo love makes the world go round yeah yeah it does like 
everything's about love, bro. Do you believe that every person has like one true love soulmate, or do you believe like we have multiple soulmates multiple. in lives? Multiple. You don't think there's it, that one like partner that like you know you were meant to be matched yeah. with? Yeah, there's there's one partner, but what you need to understand your friend could be a soulmate. There's different levels of love. Yeah, facts, facts. There's different levels of love. So it's like you could have a fucking friend. That's your soulmate. This Friendly, is this. Like, but you could have a sexual soulmate. You could have a fucking romantic soulmate. You could have this is this. So I, I do believe you could have multiple soulmates. Mm-hmm. And it's like you're not even cheating because it's like, you know, this person really we're connecting. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To me, it, it's that feeling of I feel like I've met you before. You know, those ones where it's like you meet someone and it's like almost like you had a past yeah. life. Like, why do you feel familiar? Why? Is it like so smooth and it's yeah. always like we probably if there are past lives like we probably met in a past life type thing yeah i i fucking agree to mm-hmm. be honest mm-hmm. but you talked about the chris rock thing before right yeah so what i want to say is i think it's a fucking conspiracy theory i agree i Why? think that he's a trained fucking classical actor or whatever right and come on now, like now people are pulling out references that they acted together in multiple situations. You know what I mean? And I think that they dragged it on because the way that the culture is now, when something happens, they say fake, 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 fake. But everyone believed it. So they mm. said, OK, let's keep it going. Mm. So, oh, I'm not going to press charges. Now Will Smith could say, I'm going to uh, say it on my fucking show. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's a conspiracy thing. I wouldn't be surprised because I feel like one, mm-hmm. the Oscars weren't relevant until that shit happened. Like who Walk really who really cares about the Oscars? But yeah. when you hear Will Smith slap Chris Rock, you're gonna tune in and that yeah. shit went viral. So I feel like it was like a title mm-hmm. kind of like eye grab. Yeah. And they are trained actors and Hollywood, I'm not gonna lie to me. I like the production, but it seems like it's meant to deceive us or meant to like push our eyes somewhere else, you know? And it also yeah. bear programming, bear messages, you know bear what I'm saying? Of every- Man. Subliminal, Everything. up front. Yeah. Like, and then now it's like every single movie you could tell. It's not before you, they kind of hit it, but now it's like every single movie. Oh, no, this is we're going to include this. We're going to include that. We're yeah. going to say this. We're going to say that we're going to have these scenes because mm-hmm. we want mm-hmm. this imagery, you know? Also, too, why is this his first fucking award? Mm-hmm. Fair, yeah. And also, too, like someone who could fucking. <laughs> oh, yeah, Airpod. Oh, my God. Someone who could fucking. Um, look at uh, Jasmine Sullivan. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Look at Keisha Cole, mm-hmm. right? She grew up poor, this, 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 that. She said that she used to go around the block and people would just say, you could sing. I'm going to give you $100 to sing. She was singing her fucking ass off, right? Mm-hmm. So you're telling me, Will Smith, he is one of the best fucking actors. You know what I'm saying? All time. He takes public gigs, movie gigs, and private gigs. You know what I'm saying? If someone said, oh, Will Smith, here's a bag. Can you do this? I believe that one day he's going to fucking put that speech out. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So he did a private gig for the fucking Oscars and he got his fucking off. Wait, mm-hmm. was it Oscars? Yeah, it was And Oscar. he won a fucking Oscar. Yeah, he won that night too. Yeah. So that's what happened. He did a private fucking gig because he's so sick. He could just, just like a singer could fucking belt. He fucking did his shit. He's a talented actor. Then during his speech, he's crying. That's skill. You are so such a good actor that's skill and your will smith is also a why Libra. would he do all that in the thing and then now they're trying to release that her view of the fucking perspective bitch it's nothing new it looks like you just watching with the egghead <laughs> why are you laughing it looks like you because <laughs> like, oh. yo i heard bear jokes where it's like yo male <laughs> male suffer from baldness all the time and it's like no one cares you know what i'm saying any like, bald person who tries to talk to me on beagle i said yo you're fucking bald Bald people are usually crazy. So do you think I'm crazy based on my haircut? I think you have a good soul. And God bless you with your soul. He put you in that bald body and that's good. But most bald people are crazy. I feel like I pull the bald look, bro. Like, I feel like you I do. actually pull it. You, you know? do. Some men can't pull it. You pull, you, know that. What I'm you pull that. You pull that. You know, you it's, rope it in. It's the Arab curse, bro. Like, we're hairy everywhere except our heads, you know? You're like, a good you Arab. See- You're respect. a good Arab. Respect. You know what I mean? A club yeah. girl. A wali habibi. No, but I think yo, we had a good show. I think it's we we're good to wrap up, you know what I'm saying? So I'm a shout out. So you're gonna shout out the IG is at the mother goddess. At the mother goddess. Oh yeah, I'll I'll wrap up some shit. Yeah. 
Yeah, hey, yo, well, tell me, where can goddess. people find you? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you can find me on Instagram on the mother goddess who be the hottest, and on Beagle, you can find me on the hottest. That's my tag, the hottest on Beagle. And I have a clothing line called Righteously Ratchet. You know what I'm saying? There's luxury entertainment on YouTube, that's where all my new music videos will be on and luxury entertainment. And you can follow my artist club girl who's through luxury entertainment. Okay. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. I know, and yo, yeah. I appreciate you coming. You know, I did have to like low key, like I asked you bare time still, but I was yeah, persistent. Yeah, I know. And, I but it's you the came same for through. everyone else in life. They asked me to do something, and then I don't show up. You actually but came through for me. Yeah, I did you know right now. Yeah, and I, I brought my sister. That. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate you bringing you know clout in the building. Yo, clout you know makes a noise. Clout in the woo, background, woo, woo. you know what I'm saying? Ready to DJ, <laughs> ready to play some tunes. But yo, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Burl Sound. You know, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, you know what I'm saying? Jeez, hey, hey, hey. Until next week, yo. Take care. Bye.